Recording in progress. We're going to start. Welcome, everyone, to our April. Yeah. 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 All right, who's going first? Right. Public out session. We have, um, we have Dave Safdie, who's on the phone. Mr. Safdie? Yeah, hey there. Yeah. Hey there. Oui, sir. You've got the floor. You've got three minutes. Please uh, proceed. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to talk about the 254th Street sidewalk project. At the outset, I should note that I'm speaking for a growing group of 26 homeowners who live on or about 254th. Many have been in the neighborhood for a long time. Others like me are newer. And I think all of us are in agreement that pedestrian safety is a pressing concern. And overall, we're pleased that the city is taking steps to reduce the chance of harm to pedestrians. I'd like to talk about the, the frequency and substance of the communications from the city on the project. The city's proposal represents a drastic change to the character of the neighborhood. They propose taking down trees, even taking away property from landowners, extraordinary steps. And by the way, they're looking to complete the project by the end of 2025. Even with this expedited timeline, timeline homeowners can't say whether we're in favor or against the plan for the plain reason that we haven't seen it yet. The fast pace of the project can be a benefit. We're not currently looking to slow it down. We're looking to work with it. We're eager to see the implementation of proposed improvements like catch basins and seeking utilities below grade, and also candidly to rid the street of the protective, but frankly, commercial looking stanchions. But not having seen the plans for this fast paced project just raises more questions for us. So a couple of points. The homeowners are seeking transparency into the street designs in whatever shape they're in as of today. The DDC presentation was very light on the actual plans and bear in mind, they expect to have 40% design plans complete within a couple of weeks. So it's clear the DDC has much more developed plans than what they've shared. So we wanna see those plans with, with whatever caveats they provide. If they have 25% plans today, let's see them. So point one, immediate transparency. Point two, we're looking for the city to provide a senior enough resource in DDC to whom we can provide design input. There's a lot of stakeholders of the project, but no one knows the street better than the homeowners who live there, and no one will feel its ramifications more than us. So we're looking for an opportunity to provide our input on the street design before it's too late to change it. At the March meeting, the committee asked the DDC to report back at the June meeting to allow greater community input. But considering the timeline of having 40% design plans complete by May, that's way too late for real community input. And the perfunctory availability of DDC reps who aren't senior enough to speak in depth about the project is not going to alleviate our collective unease. So point two is the provision of someone senior enough in DDC for input. And last, a significant amount of design work is scheduled to occur over the summer when the community board doesn't meet. So we're seeking some kind of mechanism where we can keep the communication with the city going over this time period. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kelly's not here yet. Uh, this this uh, issue is in the TNT committee. I just quite accidentally attended that particular meeting. The gentleman's point, I will take it. I think Kelly heard uh, that the uh, that. Different things have to be. More has to be presented to the community, and um, it is it is my hope, sir, and um, and I think Kelly will make sure that a DDC will come forward to the community board with the information you're, you're asking for, which is totally appropriate, um, and 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 do it soon. You make very good points and. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm not speaking for Kelly, but I was there and I know I, I know her sentiment. So so thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. And any other points or questions for this uh, presenter? Okay. Just that I was there. Um, it's it is preliminary. It's gonna be multi-stage. 
And Kelly made that point quite clear at the right. DC. Thank you. So we, we do we do invite and of course stay in touch with the board with the board office and our and our, and the transportation chair. Uh, you know, we, we have the same concerns. So thank you very much. Right. We'll move on to our, our next speaker who's here, I believe. Uh, Chuck. Yes. I can't see them. Mr. Chairman, first let me make the disclosure that I live off West 254th Street and have lived there since 1968. Second, let me point out the absolute incongruity of this application. While they spend a fortune with painters painting the side and putting up sticks to block traffic and have caused already a number of accidents of people going to the station, the railroad station at the bottom of the hill, or to SAR or to any of the other facilities. And they've caused them blindly and stupidly. They have still left the street loaded with potholes that are guaranteed to cause even more accidents. But there is one more point I want to make. Should they seek in any way, in any way, to take down trees, or otherwise change the essential character of the neighborhood, I will sue them. And I will sue the city of New York. And I will sue individually the officers of the agency who happen to live in the neighborhood and don't give a damn about it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Can we have any other hands up virtually? No one else here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're moving on to Daniel Flores from SDS. President? Can, um, or someone can the microphone to speak to us? Oh, it's kind of... Oh, hello. Hold on to the... Uh, the All right. Hold on. I have, I have a loud voice. Everyone oh, here. Yeah. All right. Um, hello, everyone. How's it going? Um, pleasure to be here tonight. Um, not only am I um, a proud SBSer, I'm also um, your fellow neighbor. Twenty minutes on the block. So, but I'm here tonight um, representing small business services. So. Um, right here in the city of New York, SBS, Small Business Services, has a lot of um, programs, initiatives, um, different offerings to our fellow neighbors. So I wanted to bring it out into two different sections real quick. So firstly, um, for our job section, we have an amazing um, Workforce One program that can help folks with resume building, um, career opportunities, educational um, experience, um, interview prep. And I left some of these flyers in the back. And we also have um, solutions for folks that are looking to open business. So we have free legal assistance um, for folks who are looking to negotiate their commercial lease. We have um, MWBE certifications if you're looking to sell to the government. Uh, we give uh, free training for individuals who are looking to kind of hone down their particular business skills and various initiatives to make sure that your business can um, operate fully. And if something goes wrong, we even have our own emergency response unit that can help respond and help navigate the intricacies of government. Opening a business in New York can be very challenging. Finding a job can also be very challenging. But at SPS, we're here to help. We have everything from the emerging uh, cannabis markets help um, with actual um, proper legal cannabis licenses to nightlife to our wide variety of programs for jobs and um, businesses. So if there's any questions you might have or anything that you might want to chat about, I'll be here and also be more than glad to find my work cell, 917-510-3070. You can feel free to message me 
Um, always a pleasure to be here. Thank you again to the chair and to the fellow board members. Looking forward to chatting and continuing to build a relationship. Thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation. Do we have any questions for SBS? Virtually or not, and uh, I just remind everyone, I know we have some hands up online that um, it's only board members that are allowed to ask questions or speak at this point. So um, we will, but you know, call the office with any questions whatsoever. We'll connect you, we'll connect to SPS or any of the other speakers. Thank you very much. All right, we have our third speaker. We have our third speaker. Dion Powell. Dion Powell, come on down. Oh, thank you. You got that one. There you go. David, you didn't get that one. Come on down. Yeah. What that game show? You good? No, good. This is my first meeting, guys. Hi. I'm District Leader Neon Powell of the 78 percent District. I'm a new uh, District Leader for this district. And one of the first events that I would like to have in the district is our Coalition to Protect Kids. I left these in the back. We will be discussing the new um, Equal Rights Amendment to the New York State Constitution. And one thing I'm big on is uh, civic education and engagement. And uh, number two, if Sarah's here, thank her, which I'm fascinated. I'm also putting our little African newspapers in the back, where on page three, we have an article that actually expounds a little bit more. On page three, here the papers on the back. And this event will be this Thursday at 7 p.m. at the Fordham Manor Church. So I just want to get my back to you, because that's why I'm turning. If you have an idea in the round, this is what you must do. Uh, again, Dion Powell, district leader, 78 the same district. My first meeting for me, hopefully, my next. And if there's any questions, yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Powell. Hold on a second. We have a question. The 78 the same district. 78 the same. Thank you very much. Any questions online? Any board members? No. All right, Mr. Powell, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank Be sure to leave your contact information. In case non board members, put it on the table. Thank you. Nobody wants to touch it. Code it's over. We touch it. Okay. Now we have. Um, we have. Alina Dow from the man's office is here. Ms. Dow, there's a microphone there because we need to use it because of the, uh, the Zoom. So the Zoom people can hear you. Uh, you got one minute. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Alina Dow. I'm the Bronx Rural Director for the Mayor's Community Affairs. Apologize for being late. Uh, so I just wanted to remind you all that the RTS application process is open. Please, it's, they did extend it for a couple of days. I want to make sure that CBA has representation. RTS. RTS. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Um, yes. You see? The timing though on my car broke today, so I was trying to do something with my family at the same time before I ran over here. Yes, the NSD, that's the Neighborhood Support Team. Um, they actually, it's a, it was brought on by Local Law 102 that does allow for the community to bring address concerns to just around three solid block areas. And what happens is that the Director of Quality of Life in my office will then work with multiple agencies to address those issues. Um, I did just want to let you guys know that I personally went over to 101 609. Um, yes. And okay, great, thank you. So, um, I did want to let you guys know that I am working on one making sure that it's probably going to be closed off. Um, so, I know people might not be happy with that, but I did just want to at least um, let you guys know that we need the department buildings. We are going to probably close it off just for safety and so we can secure who and what is going to be handling the repair of it. Um, uh, as far as what's happening in Riverdale soon, the mayor is going to be coming to Riverdale for a town hall. And I want to make sure all of my amazing community board member eight members are there. So please, before you leave, I'm going to be here to the end so I can get your name and your email just to put you on the list. Um, as always, I make myself available to you all. My number is 914-446-8393. And my email is a dow at cityhall.nyc.gov. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yes, uh, Rosemary and, and David. 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 David.
as soon as I get the full solid information on it. Well, and it's going to be soon. I just don't like to give a date just in case it has a change. So the six of them? It's going to be either in North, it's going to be either Northern Area or something in Northern Area. Yes. And the 601, 609 was the walkway? Yes, the walkway. Yes, 601 609. Only because it's yes, okay. common. So the street is sort of like in the middle. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, well. Yeah, it was a yeah. about the numbers. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Anyone else have any questions? Anyone online? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Okay. okay. Thanks so much. Thanks. Hi, sorry. Um, how is everybody? So uh the good news is we had our best twenty eight day period probably since I got here uh while I was on vacation. Um so I'm planning on taking more vacation this summer. Um, we're down two homicides from last year, which is zero versus two, one rape, zero versus one. We're down in robberies, which have been up since the beginning of the year. We were down nine versus 16, which is a negative seven robberies or like a 44% decrease in robberies. Uh, felony assaults were also down this 28th day. We're down 18 versus 21, uh, which is like a 14% decrease. We are down in burglaries, 11 versus 13 which is like a 15% decrease. The only thing we were up in was grand larcenies, um, which we were 56 versus 55, which is up one is like 1%. Um, the good news about that though, is the week to date that we had was like down eight versus 18, which was bit like a 55% decrease. So you're seeing a, a pretty drastic decrease in those tires and rim jobs. Um, so that, that number should be down a little bit more next week. Uh, and the GLAs were flat 23, which those have been kind of problematic since August. So that's, it's good for them to be flat. Any questions for the captain online or at board of members in person? Chuck, did you unmute? Chuck, you have to unmute yourself. Captain, do you have any hate crime statistics? Which is a question I will ask each and every month. So we didn't have any hate crimes in the period. Good. That's the best news you can give me. <laughs> Captain? Yep. Any other questions from board members? Yes, we have a couple of board members on. Right, what do we have? For board members. So, anyone else, I'm going to say you call the board office, please, because we're not a board now allowed to, to speak at this particular session. But there are committees in the ASD office for that. Council Member Dinwitz. All right, we're going to, we're going to have our elected like, official Hello. reports, and then at, at the end of the meeting, we will have um, representatives if we can, if we can fit them in. Please, uh, Councilmember. How are you doing, Sergio? Hi, everyone. Hope you're doing well uh, this this evening. Um, I'll, I'll just share a, a few things. Uh, as many of you know, on this board, New York City is considering uh, the city of Yes uh, zoning for economic opportunity and the city of Yes for housing opportunity. That is what DCP is calling it. That's what the mayor is calling it. Uh, last Tuesday, we held a borough-wide information session uh, held by DCP on the, the, the housing component. I know the order gets very confusing because we had an information session about the housing, even though economic opportunity is being voted on first. Um, there's a lot in this. We're going to be having links to everything. I've been sending it out in my newsletter. I encourage everyone here, if you've seen a presentation, if you have any opinion on it, you could still submit testimony through tomorrow to the New York City Council. Throughout the process, I'm going to be collecting survey information from all of all of you. I know a number of you on this board have already filled out my internal survey, which you, you can get this internal survey by 
signing up for my newsletter. We sent out a couple emails. I think the board also sent out an email with it. Thank you for sending it out. If you are not a board member, you're not on my list, uh, my email list, you're not in the board email list, you can still fill it out. You can go to ericdinowitz.nyc slash ZEO survey. That's Zoning for Economic Opportunity is what the ZEO stands for. It's ericdinowitz.nyc slash ZEO survey. Uh, if you would like to sign up for our newsletter, it's ericdinowitz.nyc slash newsletter. Um, tomorrow, we're having the Department of Buildings in my office uh, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then, and a we have a legal clinic on the 18th on the 18th uh, immigration clinic. Uh, so I encourage you to stop by, always reach out to my office. Uh, and there's one more bill that I'm introducing uh, to improve our 311 system. Uh, I'll be introducing that on this Thursday's stated meeting. Uh, and this month, there's a hearing on my entire package of 311 bills, which I've gone over um, at, at this board before, but you know, our city should work for us. And 311 is the system that connects us to the entire uh, city, all of our agencies. Um, you know, improving this 311 system will really have an incredibly positive impact on our quality of life if these bills pass. Uh, so I'm looking forward to my final bill in the package being introduced Thursday and the entire package being heard on April 25th, later this month. Um, thanks, everyone. Thank you, Council Member. Do you have any questions from board members for the Council Member? No questions. Are there any questions in, in person? Any questions online from board, from board members? And if not, uh, we can always reach our Council Member at the information game, or if not, the board office would uh, share that. Okay, we have no other actual elected officials present under. Virtually or in person, and we will come. And if we have uh, time remaining at the end, we do want to hear a brief report from the representatives. And at this point, we're moving past the elected officials' report and have a roll call. Sylvia Alexander. DC. Constance Barnes Walton. Uh, Bob Bender, absent. Carol Blake. Yeah. Kelly Buford, absent. Christopher Calhoun. Here. Sebastian Joe absent. Lee Chong. Ingrid DeLeon. Margaret Della, present. Nicholas Fazio. Present. Stephen Fruit. Present. David Gellman. Present. Mary Ellen Gibbs. Present. Rosemary Ginty. Present. Julia Gomez. Edward Green. Present. Emily Hausman. Present. Rashida Hilliard. Here. Barbara Kao. Here. Bob Kaplan. Josh Land. Here. Elaine Lobos. She stepped in, right? Uh, Rita Proctor Lowe, absent. Oscar Dean Martinez. Charles Merdler. Do we still ask for them to speak? That's that has been a uh, And that's how it's been done. If we want to just say DC, that's fine. Excuse me. Um, Peter Norris. All right, got it, Sylvia. Thank you. <laughs> Theodore Morris. Absent. Omar Murray. Absent. Joy Campbell Prigatier. Julie Reyes. To be. Daniel Rowan, Georgia Santiago. While we do that, Ramdat Singh, Jessica Sosa, Lars Bolter, Thank you, Charles. 
Sergio Villaverde. Martin Walhoff. If we hear from Georgia. Uh, I'm see? here, I'm present. All right. And then we'll wait after me. Thank you. <laughs> Margaret, um, I'm here. Sylvia Alexander, I'm having a problem because I don't have my mouth with me. So um, it took me a while to figure it out. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, Charles Murdler, I'm here. The coughing spill got to me at the time. Yes, we are going to we are, we are going to put down the roll call. We're going to wait. The chairperson is not here yet. We're going to wait for that at nine and ten. So I'm going to ask that the treasurer's report be given. All right, good evening, everyone. This is the April 2024 CB8 budget. Item one, operating budget, there is 112, 143 remaining. And other 1.1, other than personal services, uh, we have $24,156 remaining. For April, there were no budget bonds. We do expect uh, to have a budget month in May. Scrolling down to item 1.3, I'm advised that uh, this 194, it's some sort of glitch, the monies actually were paid, and Arlie is going to work on making that disappear since the, the monies were spent and paid. Um, item number four, rent and energy detail. We have remaining 2000 and $42. That is the April report uh, in, in consultation with uh, Julie. She's asked that if uh, any of the board members have questions, specific questions about allocations or where we are in spending, that uh, the report, as always, is given in advance of the meeting so that you can just send me an email and I can do the due diligence and get a response back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Any questions from board members present? Questions from board members for virtual. Thank you. Sorry, oh, I'm sorry. So, just the uh, anticipatory budget mod for May is it, can I assume that that's taking money from one line to another so you can spend it. It's, it's, it's a spending thing, not any other, okay, it's, it's a spending item, right? Yes. Okay, so it may, we'll see money coming from the big loan into where money is gonna be spent, is that correct? That's my understanding, yes. Thank I you. I didn't wanna step on the DM's report, but I know that it. she expects, uh, uh, I'm, I'm aware that she does expect to be spending so that because what's not used is lost. So. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. All right. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to the district manager. Thank you. Uh, I, I know that. Sergio already mentioned this, but I hope everyone had a happy Easter. Um, recently, our office received uh, the New York Botanical Gardens tickets to the Orchid Exhibition on April 6th. We distributed them to um, Riverdale Senior Services at a local shelter. They took most of the tickets. They had a lovely time. And also to some Bronx residents in the district. Um, there was a link, but I'm not going to mention that because that event has passed. 
Uh, we, we recently released our quarterly winter and review newsletter, and I hope everyone got a chance to review it, sent to the board members and to the community. Our next newsletter will be released at the end of June. And again, I want to request from any board members, if you're anywhere at any events or doing anything in the community, you can take some pictures, send it to our office. We love to highlight the things that our board does throughout the community and put in the newsletter. So thank you. Um, members of CB8 were invited by Public School 360 in Kingsbridge to speak and celebrate with their students on civic empowerment. Thank you to board members Stephen Fruit and David Gelman for representing CB8. The faculty at PS 60, 360 extended their heartfelt gratitude for taking the time to present to their students uh, with a presentation that was enlightening and provided their students with valuable knowledge about the important work of Community Board 8 in our neighborhood. Uh, that was on March 14th, so thank you again. Um, the next full board meetings will be uh, at St. Stephen's Church in Marble Hill in May, and then our final meeting of our year will be in Wayneville in June. Uh, talking about some of the money from our treasures report we're going to be spending, uh, I have looked into some new uh, speaker microphone systems to enhance the uh, sound of our meetings. And I'll be ordering some of that soon. Um, and I'll probably be purchasing that sometime this month. We're also going to be spending a lot of money on some new items to bring to the many uh, events that we're tabling at this spring and summer. Uh, we also have some uh, committees that would like to do some reports that we're going to be spending money on for that. And we will be spending down what we have budgeted for so far. Um, we have received some nominations for the Community Service Awards, and we've just sent that to the committee to consider. Uh, we will be doing outreach again, requesting nominations for Community Service Award and for our Youth Committee Awards for the Yankees Award and the Comeback Kid Awards. So we hope, we left some flyers out there, and we hope people will consider that and nominate someone worthy. Thank you. Um, I recently held my district service cabinet meeting. I sent my minutes to the um, exec board and um, my next meeting will be on May 7th. And uh, lastly, I just wanna stress that our agendas and minutes, uh, agendas are due 10 days and posted 10 days in advance, minutes 10 days after the meeting. So I thank you in advance for keeping up with that uh, timeline. And that is it for my report, unless there's any questions. Yes. June 13th, uh, he would like to know the date of the June board meeting, which will be June 13th. It's, I believe, a Thursday. Mm -hmm. We have a question in the room, virtually. And just to be clear, uh, since we only have two months left, we do not anticipate leaving much, if any, uh, budget uh, unspent by June 30th. Correct. Okay. We want to spend what Very we good. were given the budget. Very good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, District Manager. Alrighty, economic development. Your report. And if you have one, and your resolutions, please. Microphone. Sure, do the resolution first because we're going to have the report. Instead the standings, Georgia softball team needed a catcher today, so it feels good to straighten up a little bit. The Riverdale Main Street Alliance was at our last meeting, and uh, we bring forth this resolution, which was approved by the committee. I can skip forward to therefore be a result and circle back if there are questions regarding the whereabouts of all these two. Therefore, be a result that subject to the receipt of adequate plan regarding bus operations and rerouting, establishment of 15 foot emergency lane, Bronx Community Board 8 supports the issuance of a permit to the Riverdale Main Street Alliance to hold a block party 
on Riverdale Avenue from West 257th Street to West 59th Street. It is the North Riverdale uh, rock Block Party on Sunday, May 19th, 2024, from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m., inclusive of setup and breakdown for the sole purpose of hosting a one time block party. Thank you. Any questions? This is the fourth consecutive year. There's been no complaints or feedback from the community that it's positive in the past. The uh, committee has uh, perfect questions about the traffic, about the emergency lane, and so forth. They had uh, everything prepared. Thank you. Any other questions, either board um, members present or virtually? And this one came out of committee, right? It was quorum. The committee voted out. Yep. Yes. So, all right, so yeah, we, 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 any other questions? Any other discussion? Okay, so let's move the resolution. Does not require a second. This came out of committee. Any abstentions? Any opposition? Famous or best. Thank you. Good, thank you. Our last meeting was at the Bronx Ale House on Tuesday, April 2nd. Please refer to our minutes. Next meeting is on May 7th. Location will be announced shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have traffic and transportation. Good evening, everyone. Hopefully, I do this correctly. We have two resolutions, uh, both which uh, passed in committee. The first one uh, is regarding the intersection of Van Cortland Park South and Bailey Avenue. Uh, the DOT wants to uh, redesign uh, that traffic pattern there, and I'm going to read you what the committee resolved and try to move this along as for the meeting. It was resolved uh, that CBA Bronx closes the Proposed redesign as the closure of the slip lanes will adversely affect tractor trailers by reducing the turning radius and creating a hazard to other vehicles and pedestrian and increased congestion and pollution in the area. Uh, Bronx Community Board 8 uh, opposes the New York City Department of Transportation proposal to redesign the intersection of Van Cortland Park South and Bailey Avenue, including the closure slip lanes at the northbound off ramp of the Major Deegan Expressway, also known as Exit 11, and the removal of the slip lane from the eastbound lane of Van Cortland Park South, turning southbound onto Bailey Avenue. Be it resolved that Community Board 8 opposes the closure of the slip lane at the southwest corner of the intersection of Ed Cohen Park South and Bailey Avenue and the addition of a concrete bulb as closure of the slip and creation of the bulb will create a traffic hazard as large vehicles will have difficulty turning into it. Be it resolved that Community Board 8 requests that the New York City Department of Transportation thoroughly investigate the creation uh, of a sidewalk bike lane alongside the off-ramp of the major Deegan Expression Expressway and via. And finally, be it resolved the Community Board 8 request that the New York City Department of Transportation halt implementation of the proposed redesign until traffic studies recommended by the by Community Board 8, Bronx TNT Committee are fully investigated and findings are reported to CBA and presented to the TNT Committee for community input, including any redesign changes prior to any final decision and implementation of the proposed redesign currently slated for May 2024. Um, this first resolution passed in committee and I have another resolution, but I'm putting this one out first. Uh, on to the next one. No, hang on. 
Okay. Yes. Uh, so that well, was that, that was passed by committee. The, the committee had a quorum. Yes. Okay. So it does not require a second any discussion. Yes, David. Yeah, send the, David, you need the microphone. Please pass David the microphone. Your question might be kidding. Uh, I send notes to uh, Kelly and Marty and, and Sergio help me out for those last four resolved. Shouldn't it be further resolved? This is the language that we typically use in resolutions. Be it further resolved in those last four paragraphs rather than just resolved. So I think resolved sort of makes it each paragraph finite. Marty, any comment? Do you agree? All right. All right. So they Chris, do you take it as a friendly amendment? Do you take the language change as a friendly amendment? Be it further resolved? Yes. Be resolved. Yes. In the last four paragraphs. Okay, so that's a friendly amendment. That's okay. Any other discussion or questions? Please give this back to me. Oh, sorry. Yes. Any other questions or comments from our uh, board members out there? Present? Yes, Devin. Is this working? Right. I just wanted to take a moment as a person who lives in the uh, entrance of Park a lot from the southern end of the Bailey um, entrance, just to say that I, I was actually really happy to see the changes that the Department of Transportation proposes. I know that there's always a little bit of sus uh, suspicion whenever the Department of Transportation gets ideas in their mind about uh, pedestrian improvements. Um, but I also know that that entrance has been really hard to cross um, for a really long time. And I have friends who have children who don't even go that way, which you know makes it difficult for them to enter the park. And so as much as I think that it's always good to really give DOT very like solid feedback on presentations, I don't think we should propose, I don't think we should oppose it because it, it, it could potentially prevent them from doing anything um, at that entrance, which we really do want them to do something to make it easier to get into the park. Thank you, Deb. We have Chuck and then we have Rosemary. Um, Chuck, you have Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Sergio, I have two things. First, the representative of the district attorney has had his hand up for quite a while. You may not have seen it. And Ms. Robbins has had her hand up for quite a while as well. That's number one. Number two, uh, I would like to suggest to the Traffic and Transportation Committee something that may to it seem somewhat novel. At one point in time, until the consolidation of agencies under initially John V. Lindsay, there were two different departments. One was the Department of Highways and the other one was a traffic department. And the result at that time was that highways really did a, a very credible job. You had very few of the pothole epidemics that we have nowadays. And the issues you've just heard raised here are symptomatic of those that have been going on for some time. And DOT doesn't give a damn. They much prefer to paint streets than to pay attention to what the streets drive and what they do. So I would suggest, and I'm not kidding, I really mean it, that we ask our city council members, and maybe the committee should take a look at it first, to advocate the bifurcation and the restoration of a separate department of highways that will pay attention to the streets and their condition, and a separate department that can pay the attention to painting streets and transportation and issues like this. At the moment, highways is being starved. And that's not right. It's not anybody's interest. Give it some thought, please, if I may. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. So we uh, with the representative of the DA's office will be allowed to speak time permitting at the end, as we said earlier. And Rosemary, you have a comment on it. Yes, on, 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 res on the resolution, um, I, I'm, I'm not a member of the committee, but I happen to attend that particular uh, TNT committee meeting. And uh, well, I, I understand uh, your, your concerns that Deb and Nick can consider. But I, I do have to say, I, I never even want 
career on this community board have seen a thinner presentation of changing major streets in our neighborhood. I've never. All they talked about was pedestrians can cross here and the bikes can go there. That was it. When the question was asked, when you do that, how will that affect the traffic flow? If you, you, you know this, the trucks on, trucks off, all the, it, 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 when you close the slip lane, it was zero discussion of the impact of their proposed changes on the traffic. So I, I, I think the resolution is perfect. I don't think, I, I think it's the kind of thing that DOT should, should have done and needs to do for anything to go forward uh, in changing the structure of those streets. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. All right. Um, yes, Mary Ellen has a quick order. Anybody else uh, virtually have their hand up? Because we want to bring this to the vote now. Well, that's the chair. I just want to consider also that block where they're suggesting everything come out. That block is going to also have a new school being built, a new apartment building, and it's going to be complete havoc, you know, directing the travel that traffic towards in that intersection. So I you know, consider that also. Thank you. All right. So that is that's all the board members who are who have commented on this. This came out of the committee, so we're going to it's going to we're going to call the question at this point. Any abstentions? Take account. It's just me. Well, that's a short count, but we still have to take account. <laughs> okay. Any opposition to this? I'll get back to all three of them. We're going to have some, we're going to ask an individual members who are on. All right. All in favor? Please keep your virtual and actual hands up. Marty, you want Paul Sanders to come? Did you go? Yes. All right. I think we have everybody's hand. Can we put the hands up? Okay. And then we had to ask um, how Chuck. Chuck, how did you vote? I would, I, forgive me, I would oppose. Thank you. And then we have Sylvia, how did you vote, please? In favor. Thank you. Georgia. And Georgia. Yes, I would agree as well. Thank you. Okay. So the resolution passes. Yes. The actual count in minutes. Next traffic transportation, you have another one? Yes, I do. Please now, I'll try to speed it along. 
Um, this is regarding the Henry Hudson Parkway overpass at West 232nd Street, which for those of you that are not familiar, it's part of the um, reconstruction of the Henry Hudson Parkway retaining wall. And they've been storing uh, a massive amount of construction equipment, primarily on the uh, south um, crossway on that overpass. So um, we request uh, that this needs to be removed because you can clearly see, and I don't necessarily live right around there, but I've seen it on my own, People are being forced out into the street and such and going to Seton Park or PS24 or Junior High School 141, although I date myself, that's what it was called when I went there. Um, so, I just wanted to see who was doing that. Okay. Anyway, here's the, uh, be it resolved that Community Board 8 Request that the New York uh, State Department of Transportation remove the equipment and materials being stored on the south uh, sidewalk of the Henry Hudson Parkway overpass at West 232nd Street to allow pedestrians to safely cross at this intersection. And can't say it any more basic than that, but there is stuff under tarps and stuff that's just not being used. And go look at it. It's it is what it is. Thank you, thank you. So this is passed by committee with quorum. Yes, yes, it was. Any requests for second? Any discussion or any questions from members present, person, or online? Please let us know. Negative. Okay, we'll call the question. See any discussion? Any abstentions? Anyone opposed to the resolution? So, all in favor, pass as unanimous. Thank you. No. Oh, they, they, they didn't say anything. Chuck? I'm in favor. Thank you. Sylvia? In favor. Thank you. And Georgia? In favor. Thank you, Georgia. Okay, it's unanimous. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Georgia. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. My, uh, my last item, just before Madam Chair, you go on, is our next meetings next week, the 18th, at the board office. Everyone come on down like the price is right. That's it. <laughs> All right, public safety committee has three resolutions. They're all SLA renewals for liquor, wine, beer, and cider. The first one is for William E. Urban. Junior Post, the American Legion. Uh, St. Portland Park Golf Course. And Baby Crab Seafood and Grill. 15th Precinct had no issues with any of these establishments. And the uh, Public Safety Committee approved all of them unanimously. So I'd like to vote on them as a block, all three. Does anybody has and not saying anyone has any objections? Okay, fine. Uh, does anyone abstain? Or is there any discussion first? Okay, does anyone abstain? Disapproved? So all in favor. Okay, and our okay, next wait. we have Chuck. In favor. Sylvia? In favor. Georgia? In favor. Thank you. Our next meeting is next Tuesday, uh, 16th. 
Doesn't support that guy. Thank you. Educational libraries. Sylvia. Yeah. Um, I have uh, two uh, resolutions. Um, the one is from Rabbi Shemtov of Kavat of R Riverdale. Uh, it's for a, a Lakba Omer block party picnic on May 26th. They're closing the street at West 235th Street between Independence and Douglas uh, from 9 to 4 for the children. And then again from 4 to 1030 for the adults. So I, I kind of uh, combined them. Um, they've been doing that for 31 years, so it's not a new application. And um, therefore, be it resolved that uh, Bronx Community Board 8 approves it. Can we have a vote on it? Okay, we'll take a vote. Any discussion? Anyone abstain? Disagree? All my favor. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Chuck and Georgia, how do you vote? And Sylvia. In favor. Georgia? In favor, dear. Thank you. And Sylvia? Oh, of course, and Sylvia. in favor. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I have one more resolution uh, for the Amalgamated Nursery um, School, um, their Spring Bazaar, which is being held on uh, May 19th. And they are closing the street at Gale Place between Olaf Avenue and Van Colton Park South uh, from 9 to 430 and they have done that uh, for several years also, and um, hope that the board approves it. The committee did. Great, thanks. Any discussion? Any abstentions? Disapprovals? Well, in, well no. Georgia? Any I approve on this? Yes. Chuck? Favor. And Sylvia, just for the record? Yes, in favor. Okay, that's unanimous then. Is that your report? Um, no, I have a little more. Um, the um, committee discussed the uh, negative uh, declaration that was uh, presented to us by SCA on the site for a new school at Van Cortland Motel. Uh, we had number, we had invited them, but they didn't come. And we had uh, many questions. The letter was sent out to them. They acknowledged that the it was received. However, I haven't had any um, response other than that. Uh, one of the reasons that we felt that the negative declaration did not address um, some of the obvious, very obvious uh, traffic problems and such. And uh, they just poo pooed it, everything, everything is fine. Negative declaration will take care of everything. So uh, we're looking forward to getting responses. And one other thing that happened was that the negative declaration did not reach us until March 6th. Although it was um, uh, received by the SCA or finished by the SCA by January 31st. So we don't know why it took so long to get to us. Therefore, when the community, uh, the um, city council voted on it on the 7th, uh, no one had been able to look at it, including the council person. And um, of course, it was only for the site and therefore they just approved it. Um, we are trying to get an answer from SCA, but it's very difficult. And uh, when I do, I will inform you. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. I just want to follow up and say that council member Dinowitz mentioned that he is going to have his land use personnel, the attorneys take a look at the net deck into the map. 
Okay. Law rules and ethics. Marty, Marty Vocal. Good evening. Um, uh, Small note, Alan Kim could not attend the LRE meeting. He, had, he actually made a presentation from the Conflicts of Interest Board at the last board meeting, but he is scheduled to appear at our next LRE meeting. He couldn't attend this past one yesterday on Monday, May 13th, and that is the next LRE meeting. If you want to ask particular questions to Alex, that would be a greater opportunity than there was at the board meeting. Um, next, um, the LRE committee is going to be uh, submitting to the board for its consideration a resolution at the May meeting uh, to uh, eliminate the EC process and return to the basic situation we had before the pandemic where people appeared in person to be present, to vote, to count as a quorum uh, or not. And uh, the reasons for that were uh, distributed uh, by chair, the chair, Marty Walkoff, uh, last month. And um, he, enlisted, he asked for a comment from anyone about this. And we've received comment from, I think it's about four people. And so we urge anyone else uh, to come forward. Just contact Marty, uh, contact me, contact the board office, uh, any views about that. But the reasons are set out uh, pretty extensively. Uh, in the minutes. Um, in that regard, the resolution will also come up for a renewal in the May meeting of the use of video conferencing for our meetings. This is different from EC extraordinary circumstances. Video conferencing just makes our meetings available where practicable, and they're not always practicable, like when we meet at the precinct. But our meetings would continue to be available by video conference to members of the public and to board members or any other guests who want access to listen. And in case of committees, they're able to participate at the chair's discretion. So those are two things that will happen at the main meeting uh, proposed by LRB. Any questions? Those are two related but different things. Thank you. Thanks. Environment sanitation. Um, our meeting was uh, March 20th. Oh, for you two minutes, the end of the um, Our next meeting, I think, will actually be in May. We're going to cancel the meeting next week due to complex of other members having another meeting that night, which makes sense. So there's not much going on otherwise. I'll be my but it has been said, I guess. So. Um, if anyone has any questions, let me know. That's, it'll be, I think, like May 16th, makes sense. It's the third Wednesday, unless I have something to change it. No, I agree. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We discussed that fully at the meeting that will be. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Health, hospitals, and social services. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I skipped. I'm sorry, I skipped two. I'm back. Okay, you, Julia Gomez, Dr. Julia Gomez. Now, uh, for each of our minutes, next meeting is Monday the 15th at 7.30 at the board office. Have a good evening. Thank you, Julia. The next is Aging, Oscar Martinez. So, let's move back. Uh, our next meeting is Thursday, the 11th. At 4 p.m. at RSS, Riverdale Senior Services. The address to that is 2600 Netherton Avenue, Street 100. And please join us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Ajit, take it again. Um, as you know, we are uh, wrapping up uh, June 30th, fiscal year 2024. Um, the uh, City Council is debating fiscal year 2025 with the Mayor's Office. They will probably come up with a final budget late next month and more likely early in June. However, uh, directly relevant right now is that we need to get our individual committee um, requests uh, for capital and expense uh, budget priorities for fiscal year 2026. Due date is April 19th, Friday of next week. Uh, please let me know. I, I get them into the board office and kindly CC me on your email. Please let me know if you think you'll have any difficulty meeting that schedule. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay. Health, hospitals, and social services. Sure, we did have a meeting last month. Uh, however, uh, the last meeting we had was with Hassan Nabi, the executive director of the mayor's office on the prevention of hate crimes. Uh, that's in line with a proposed forum that we'd like to put together on the impact of hate on health in, in the context of the Bronx and, and different populations in the Bronx. Uh, tomorrow is our next meeting, uh, it'll be at seven. And we will have uh, the main feature will be uh, Senator Gustavo Rivera will be discussing his uh, role as the chair of the Senate uh, Committee on Health. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, for a, a report on, on my committee, uh, of course, everyone can look at the minutes, but I just want to give um, a, a one, one thought. It, Laura Spulter and Karen Argenti were generous, very generous to come to our committee to make a presentation um, a, focusing on getting ready for the environmental impact statement for the housing proposals. Uh, from the city that we will be seeing at some point sooner or later. And it was a very good focus, what we should be considering as we sit and wait for the proposals to come out. Um, very grateful for your presentation and, and Karen's. Um, it is on YouTube. If people want to see it, I recommend looking at it. Uh, it's also online. I think the PowerPoint is online, but like anything else, uh, looking at TV is easier than reading a book. So maybe YouTube is easier than sitting and, and, and reading the online presentation. Um, okay, uh, there is no April meeting because of the uh, holidays, and our next meeting will be uh, May 29th. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. Parks and Recreation. Hold. Here we go. I'm, I'm holding. Um, uh, our last meeting was March 27th, so we'll bring you to the minutes for highlights from that. Um, our next meeting will be April 24th. We're going to have um, DDC come to discuss the Washington Golf Course, um, the, just the finalization of the, the driving range. Um, and then also hopefully the concession unit will also uh, be in present to talk about the new concession contract, which will be for a couple of years. So that is um, April 24th. Thank you. Thank you, Landers, Chuck? What? Okay. Um, our next meeting is May the 6th. We are going to have at that time at least four significant applications, if nothing new arises, uh, whether they be the issues of uh, the Hebrew home, whether it be the building that is or is not in uh, the Pilsen area and the like, there are issues here, literally covering the waterfront of uses. Um, I wanted to take this minute though also to point out something to you. 
we have, as I recall it, two more meetings before the summer recess. We have not yet seen the text or any detailed explanation of the housing portion of City of Yes, so that Rosemary and her committee can take a look at it, and land use can look at it, and both of us doing it within the uh, framework of the special committee that Julie created quite wisely, I think. But I wanted to call your attention to it because it has a number of issues that are dead center in terms of importance to the viability of this community and its future. I am not exaggerating when I say viability of the community, whether it be the issue of allowing single family homes just at a point in time when, as Rosemary found out, and we all did, uh, people were trying to have people of color finally have homes in Kingsbridge. Everything went against them doing it. This is coming at a time when people of color and people who have made their way up by their fingernails working can afford a home are being told no more single family homes, no more of ones. Uh, these issues of, are important not only from a housing standpoint, but from a standpoint of civil rights. So these issues are coming up. We have two more meetings between now and then. My instinct, based on the report I heard at the meeting that Councilman Dinowitz mentioned earlier, is that uh, this is going to be exceptionally controversial. Um, and so there are two only two ways of dealing with this, and we probably have to use them both. One is a summer meeting, which we ought to get all get ready for. And number two, what I'm contemplating doing, if I haven't mentioned it to Rosemary yet, but maybe putting together as soon as we get hold of a copy, a draft of proposals uh, aimed at this. Uh, this is a total change for the city of New York that makes no sense. At a time when you use housing in the Broadway area where people are being asked to come with tourist dollars and you turn it into a shelter, makes no sense. When you do it near Grand Central, it makes no sense. There just isn't a housing policy. And therefore, you have to think what we can do. We need affordable housing. That is a term that even the commissioner has said to me he doesn't fully understand either. Because there is no specific determination from the city of New York, nor will there be. It's flexibility personified. I am trying to convey to you a message. Whether I succeed or fail, I don't know. It is, we have a couple of months coming ahead that we all need to pay a lot of attention to, and I thank you. Thank you, Chuck. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss that, I think, as well. Special Committee on the Racial Equity. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Ernie. Um, our next meeting is Thursday. We will be uh, reviewing a draft we've started to put together for resources um, for the community based on um, the concerns around hate crimes and um, ways that individuals can care for themselves, find resources, find avenues um, uh, in response to any uh, discrimination, bias, or um, otherwise perceived. And uh, so we'll be discussing that and looking at the year in review. We usually uh, complete our interim report in May um, to be submitted before the June 13th board meeting, uh, just so that it can reflect and sort of take a high level review of each committee, um, document what's been discussed that's focused on um, elevating equity within our district, and look at the uh, budget map um, and update that to indicate where we've uh, placed our uh, financial requests to the city 
and anything else that sort of comes up. So uh, we'll be talking about how we're going to get through the end of the year, our timeline uh, reports, and uh, we welcome anyone to come and attend. So it's Thursday, seven o'clock at the office. Thank you. Okay, question. Uh, Rabbi Kaplan has a question. I appreciate that the special committee deals with the issue of hate crimes in general, um, just as a, as a point of information. Tonight is uh, the one of the holiest nights of the Islamic calendar. Um, schools are actually closed tomorrow, and uh, the next meeting of the parks uh, meeting will be on the second day of uh, ESO. So I think that this, uh, in the future, when we review calendars for meetings, um, we need to be conscious of how certain communities observe their holidays. You know, the Islamic calendar and the Jewish calendar is similar. We start at sunset and end at sunset. Right, one hour, a few minutes before sunset, a sunrise, a sunset, and a few minutes after sunset. So uh, it is normative that one a committee that is dedicating itself towards uh, meeting the challenges of, of, of hate, Within our communities, these are observed these kinds of uh, holidays because those of the Islamic faith uh, would not be able to, would, wouldn't uh, be able to uh, attend a meeting like this. So that community is excluded uh, by, by a calendar. And then those of the Jewish faith would, you know, who would want to attend the Parks Department uh, meeting would likewise be excluded. So I'm just bringing that uh, as a point of reference and point of on the calendar. The holiday is Thursday. Is that what you're saying? It's seventeenth, second day of the first of all, today's the day. Yeah. It starts started at sunset. Right. Um, and then and the next parks meeting will be on the second day of the next month. Our, our meeting is on Thursday the eleventh. That's Sorry, I have sorry. I just, no, I wasn't with a racial. No. I'm, yeah, saying, I'm just three years I'm on using day. this opportunity oh, God. to say that we are not providing an avenue for those of the Islamic faith to attend the meeting tonight, nor of the next parks meeting, which is on the 17th, excuse me, the 24th, 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 which, which is the second day of Nesser. Which is, um, so I'm just putting that on the uh, as a point of note, that uh, a, a community board should be more observant of those who observe. Thank you. Uh, just to note also the June school board meeting is the 13th, which is the second day of the totality of Kabul. So it's also a month. If we're noting. It's not like another. How's that? This board has been extremely sensitive over the years about holidays, especially the Jewish holidays, but it's all the holidays. I think the Diwali last year, we didn't, we are extremely sensitive and care about these. When it comes to the Jewish holidays, we turn to um, the number of members of the board. Just because it's a Jewish holiday does not mean it's a if you get this right, no work day or something. So, so just a holiday doesn't say you don't have a meeting. There are special, special holidays, and I can leave Sylvia or uh, Marty can can explain that more. So there are, there are certain days, no work days, where we do not hold meetings. But if there's just a Jewish holiday, it, if there were Jewish holidays, we can hold meetings there. Rabbi, is that not a, a fair statement? The no work days are the most... Se the second, most... second day of Passover is no work day. Exactly, exactly. And the first is, there is, it is one of the holiest days. Exactly. Of exactly. So uh, but we have been... Uh, uh, this board is sensitive to and can continue to be sensitive to religious holidays. Uh, and if somebody... That's, that's it. And that that's our tradition, and thank you for mentioning it. But that is our tradition on this. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. That is definitely nothing. Okay. Good. Thank you. In line with that, I think we have sort of used the school calendar as, for days closed as an identifier. No? Yes. Well, yes, our friends. So what I'd like to have is we'll need to be uh, someone that can be asked for Jewish holidays and Islam holidays as well. Thank you. Okay, now it is special committee on veteran. I'm sorry, is that a good one? I don't think. Oh, it just it might be helpful at the beginning for you to um, designate the holidays. And I think that that way we can all align on which days are the days. And then, because I'm, I'm very sorry, I didn't know that the second day was important. Um, and so that, we, that way we all know and we can uh, schedule them. That's what I would suggest. Thank you. Thank you. Just one more notice. And, and the school calendar would not indicate if he thought that there is tomorrow on the school calendar, but the Islamic calendar starts as the Jewish calendar does at sunset uh, the day before their lunar calendar. So it, it's, it wouldn't be able to be used as an indicator because uh, today uh, on the school calendar, it's not even built either. But if you look at uh, an Islamic calendar or, or, or any other uh, lunar calendar, they're going to uh, be a very different way of doing it. I'm not, I'm not, there's no accusation here. I'm just bringing it up as a point of notion um, that we need to be more careful and conscious of it. And I was not even aware that uh, uh, Shavuot, uh, the second day, which is also a non work day, uh, a day that when uh, those who were observant uh, in a certain way in the Jewish community would not be able to attend uh, or participate in either meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, really? Now let's go. Okay. Special committee of veterans. Good evening. Uh, we will be meeting on April twenty fifth. Uh, we will be. We, will, we may be joined by the chair of the city council veterans committee, who uh, I had the pleasure of testifying at his committee last week. Thanks to the notice of report, I uh, testified in an individual capacity. And so we intend to go over uh, some economic development issues related to um, veterans and opportunities that they have. So it should be an interesting meeting for anybody that's friends or busy veterans. And then welcome to the lunch meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Special Committee on Pennsylvania Veterans Affairs. Thank you. I will do my report very quickly. Um, I'll say see the executive minutes and just um, thank you to Sergio for helping and being for me last month and earlier today. And David Gellman and Stephen Fruit, I know Sarah mentioned it, but I just want to say again thank you for present representing the board at your civic duties with children. I hope that they didn't beat you guys up. Um, but but thank you. I'm sure you enjoyed yourselves. And, no <laughs> and, and Margaret and, and um, Rosemary, thank you again for stepping in for the bar president's office meeting for me. And a huge, I'm sure you guys mentioned it, the newsletter that Barney and Farrah put together, incredible. I hope everybody got a chance to see it. It was really very well done. Okay, and that's it for my report. If anyone has any questions, go at it. And then we'll just move on to the nominations. Any questions? Okay, so tonight is nominations for the nominating committee. We will be taking nominations from the floor. I'm just going to read something for Margaret. Okay, in accordance to Section 5, Article 2, board members who are putting together the full slate should make their choice bearing in mind 
that is both good policy as well as conducive to the smooth bearing, the smooth functioning of the board to strive for a nominating committee and a slate of proposed officers and committee chairs to represent diversity in geographic areas within the board, communities, ethnic and racial groups, professional and board backgrounds. The choices made should also consider the experience of any nominee as a board member and the extent of the interest shown by any such nominee in participating in board matters. These factors, while not meant to account any particular individual choice, should always serve as general guidance. The roll call was taken. Okay, roll call was taken. I'm going to open up the nominations for, we're putting together a nominating committee. Yes. <coughs> I nominate uh, board member Ingrid De Leon on the nominating committee. And second, Sergio Ingrid. Okay. Any other nominations? Rosemary. Um, I, I think when it comes to the nominating committee, we can do three to five members. We've never done three. We always do wind up doing five, even though we can do three. But on, it, there should be people of um, all, all levels of experience. So I'd like to nominate uh, Bob Bender as, as a person who has a lot of experience with the board, has been chair of committees, has been vice chair of the board, um, has been on special committees, and I think he, he brings uh, historic uh, expertise uh, to the nominating committee. So I nominate both. One second. You, you may ask them if they accept, if they're not here when they're notified. No, that's, that's a good question. Okay, so we second by Julia. We have Ingrid and Bob Bender. Any other nominations? Sergio? Steve Group. I didn't put them up to that. <laughs> I, I respectfully decline to accept that I've served as chair twice in the last few years of the nominating committee. And if Blue Blood is good with the board, we're not yours. Guidance is also good too. Thank you. Laura? Uh, I am, I'm, I'm Emily Hasman. Who? Okay. I'll nominate Mary Ellen Gibbs. Second. Yes. Do we have five? We have nominated five, but only nominated four. Oh, Steve said no. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> okay, four. We can have three to five, but you can nominate. If you nominate more than five, then we'll just have a four. Uh, uh, but we can have the minimum is three. Yes. It's good to have an odd number in the cake in order to decide things in such a small group. Um, uh, I'd like to nominate Ed Green, but I apologize because I have not asked him in advance. I would respectfully decline. I've been on the nominating committee before. Things are well acted right now. Thank you. Appreciate it. It, it is important. I urge there be a fifth member. 
it is it is not good to have a nominating committee of four people. It is e either three or five. Please, somebody. Oh, okay. Okay. But you have to be qualified. You have to be acknowledged. You have to be recognized. Sergio had his hand up. Sergio. Okay. I nominate Laura Spolton. I didn't hear the five names. The names were Ingrid, Bob Bender, Laura, Mary, Ellen, and Emily. Thank you. Chuck and Georgia, do you have any comments or questions? No. Okay, so then we'll move on to the board minutes, March 12th. Four minutes, everyone had a chance to review. Anyone has any edits or comments? Steve? I'd just like to commend whoever or whatever committee put together the board minutes because they were extremely comprehensive and well written and easy to digest. Thank you to Artie. Oh, So, no discussion other than that. Okay, so, any uh, approvals? Unanimous? Okay, no objections, no abstentions. Discussions of the executive minutes for April 3rd. Any comments? Okay, so then okay, so we we'll put this one on next month. I know. Okay, the April third executive minutes will be at next month's meeting, and they will be online within the next week. So now we're going to the miscellaneous section, and I noticed that. Um, Andrea Robbins, I see your name is, your, your hand is up. Are you, if you're representing an elected official, we can hear from you because we're in the miscellaneous portion of our meeting and we have a few minutes. Um, are you a representative? No, I had asked to speak as a member of the West 254th Street group 
I had asked to speak when I got the original invitation and never received the comment back accepting it. Okay, so. Go ahead, Frank. Yeah, so uh, Ms. Robbins, uh, proceed, you have three minutes. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Um, I hope that those of you who are on the call will recognize my persistence in staying on the call, and it's a reflection of the passion that I feel about this. Similarly, um, I want to thank Abe Safdie and Charles Myrtler for speaking with thought and with passion. I too have been a very long time resident of this area. And frankly, I remember 254th Street when the main structure on the street was the Toscanini estate. I would like to request that as we go forward, it is noted that the opinions that the board seeks out need to come from a diverse population. I personally am concerned that, for example, SAR's intentions are not always as clear or as focused or directed as they should be. For example, it was never SAR that called out the danger to their own students and to all cars when the buses were parked from top to bottom on 254th Street. It took residents of this area to call it out. And with that and police action, those buses were moved. So in whatever is going to happen going forward, the stanchions create enormous problems now in terms of the Metro Link and the buses and the cars really coming very close to scraping each other and putting people in danger. Whatever is going to come going forward, this board hopefully will listen to a diverse set of opinions and people and not be limited in the scope of who gets to suggest what is right for this community. What is there now does not work. It complicates it. It was mentioned that in avoiding potholes, cars are very close to um, scraping each other. There are things that could be done to make this safe and proper while still maintaining the beauty of this neighborhood. So I appreciate finally being acknowledged. I do want it noted that I tried to do it according to your rules and requested the opportunity to speak. So Charles, thank you for raising my hand with your voice since my voice was silenced until now. Well, we apologize for any inconvenience if we caused it and thank you for speaking and everything will be noted. Thank you. Thank you. Here we have Jesse Blair. From Assemblyman office. Yes, hi, good evening. Thank you so much. Um, the Assemblyman's office, in conjunction with other elected officials, Congressman uh, Torres, as well as Senator, <clears throat> State Senator Jamal Bailey, and Councilman Barry Dinowitz, will be hosting various shredding events in May. Uh, the first will be Sunday, May 5th, at our district office, uh, Assemblyman Dinowitz's district office at 3107 Kingsbridge Ave. That will be from 10 to 1. The second will be Saturday, May 18th, at the Woodlawn Public Library at 4355 Gatona Ave, also 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And the third will be Sunday, May 19th. Um, on Johnson Avenue in Riverdale, 235th Street in Johnson Ave, also from 10 to 1. Um, just to um, reiterate what we've said in the past, uh, while the shredding machine is robust, it's not something that you can, say, throw an Encyclopedia Britannica into without at least chopping that up somewhat in, in advance. Um, so please just be aware that metal items, paper clips, things like that should be separated as not to uh, damage the machine and you know, uh, affect the event. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. And then we have Jeffrey Pena from the downstairs office. Yes, hello. I hope everyone's having a good night. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Pena. I am a community engagement coordinator for the Bronx District Attorney's Office. Uh, we are having a toy bin drive um, in the lobby of our office, 198 161st Street, Bronx, New York, 10451. We are accepting gently used or new toys, books, clothes, and costumes uh, for children the ages of one to 16 years old. 
the toys will be distributed at the child safety fair and donated to the Bronx District Attorney's fifth floor waiting room. We are also having our seventh annual child safety fair on Saturday, April 27th, 2024 from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Whitney Young Junior Campus Immediate School. Um, the address is 1919 Prospect Avenue, Bronx, New York, 10457. Uh, so we're going to have a rock climbing wall, bouncy house, popcorn, candy, and a bunch of activities for the children. So if anyone uh, knows any kids that might be interested, please, uh, please bring them along. I sent the flyers to the community board, um, or I emailed them to the community board. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me as well. Thank you. Um, the representatives were told that they could speak at the miscellaneous at the end. So we have just two and then that's it. Three minutes each. One more minute. One minute. Oh, one minute. Oh, one minute. Okay. Brent, Brent Schneider from Senator Gustavo's office, Rivera's office. Yes. Hi. How you guys doing? Um, two quick things. Um, one, uh, Senator Rivera will begin hosting uh, constituent uh, meetings uh, every every Friday. It will be virtual. When you can, if you want to talk to him about any sort of topic, whether it's legislative, media affairs related, you can make you can make an appointment at uh, our by calling our office at seven one eight nine three three two zero three four. And secondly, uh, tomorrow he will be attending. CBH health uh health committee meeting and he'll be there virtually, um and we he looks forward to seeing you guys there. Thank you, Brent. And the last, Rosie Mendoza from Bronx Mendoza from the Public Advocates Office. Sorry, Rosie. I was having trouble unmuting. Um, uh. The public advocate puts out the worst landlord list every year. And recently, um, Abba Shalom, a landlord who was on the list uh, for the past two years, was arrested and um, for having his buildings in, in very poor condition that was threatening to tenants' lives. Um, the public advocate is introducing a bill this week with... Um, Council member Eric Botcher regarding um, single use water containers, whether they're plastic or cardboard um, for city agencies and limiting uh, purchasing them, uh, buying them in bigger bulk sizes. Um, and he released uh, some, some suggestions and recommendations for uh, lithium ion batteries that are becoming uh, the biggest source of fires and dangerous fires in the city. Um, and and that is all. Thank you. Send it to the office if you haven't done so already. And we'll distribute it as well. Thank you. Okay, any other miscellaneous from the board? Okay, the next meeting is May 14th. And the nominating committee meeting will follow this meeting. Thank you all for attending. The meeting is adjourned. Oh,